Hello and everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the workshop of the intersection of politics of fashion education, nightmares and dreams, a workshop of constructive collective destruction. So this is not so much a panel, it's really a, an interactive workshop. And and um, as an interactive workshop, it would be fantastic to, to see some of your faces uh, and also to hear where you're joining us from. So please use the chat to just quickly put in where are you joining us from today? Um, might be the city or the college or also the course that you want to include. So today's um, today's workshop is um, going to be run by myself. I'm Renata Staus. I'm a professor of um, fashion studies at the American University of Paris. And I pass on to Martina to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Martina Mendelssohn. I'm a student at the American University of Paris. I study creative writing and I'm an intern for Renata Staus and Francisca Schreiber. Yes, thank you Martina. So welcome everybody. My name is Francisca Schreiber. I'm a professor for fashion design at the Berlin University of the Arts. So I'm looking more from the practice led side perspectives on this workshop. So what uh, what brought us together um, and really yeah brought us together was really this this love for making and and wearing fashion, for learning and thinking through fashion, and we were also brought together by our critique of fashion education, as much as um, our belief in it and its potential, um, and a critique of its exclusiveness of its discriminatory practices, its complicity with and feeding of a highly problematic industry, as much as its connective educational and transformative potential. So that's really in line with what Bell Hooks has expressed as the classroom remains the most radical political space of possibility in the academy. And we would add that education in itself does not automatically hold the answers, as David Orr has noted so poignantly um, in his saying, it is not education, but education of a certain kind that will save us. So it's really this, you know, simultaneously thinking of um, exploration, critique and possibility, which determined our work on fashion education, where we founded the digital multilogs that some of you have might come across also participated in um, 2020, 2021. And then just on Wednesday, um, the multilog on what can fashion education do, taking the predicament that the world is on fire, but we're still teaching fashion. Um, and also through our um, podcast entitled Fashion is a Great Teacher, where we, for example, spoke to Tanvir Ahmed. Um, I think some of you might be lucky enough to be in class with her um, and really speaking about different fashion educational practices. So for framing this workshop, Francisca is going to, yeah. to give you the core idea. Yeah, so today's workshop the Intersection of Politics of Fashion Education, Nightmares and Dreams, is a workshop of constructive collective destruction. It's really about um, thinking what we want to throw and to keep in fashion education right now. For long, the dominant model of fashion education involved an individualistic and restricted educational model and practice practices complicit in and productive of an exclusive singular fashion system. What education is relevant for the wor world we live in, the futures we want to create, what kinds of fashion education are needed now? This workshop will be framed by recent developments in the field named to collective destruction to rebuild. So we will give little inputs and then really creatively try to work together and um, foster an to the collective brain of this, of uh, all of us. So. Yeah, so really the workshop is about um, collective brainstorming, collective dreaming. Um, it's, as I said, very much an interactive workshop. Um, at the core of what we do is multi-logging, which involves a lot of people, and we really rely on your voices and your input and your different experiences. And I think this is when something 
um, creative and constructive canimage. So just to frame this this title we've given, this inter intersectional politics, I think what we're currently seeing is really a growing critical discourse on the intersectional politics of fashion education. So when we when we refer to fashion education, um, we're aware of the richness of learning approaches to fashion. And um, at the same time, there's a dominant model that we are really part of. You know, we're, we're at St. Martin's, uh, at least virtually, which is is really, you know, has has been sort of heralded as, you know, the top school in the world, etc. So there's this discourse of um, of uh, centre and um, periphery of, of domination as well. So while we are aware of the richness of, of fashion education, there's a dominant model that is now being exported globally with a lot of colleges in the UK and the US, especially um, founding sort of so-called daughter institutions in the global southwest and really expanding the educational market and turning education into a business. And generally, I would say that fashion education fits like a glove into the capitalistic logic. Fashion education could be regarded as a favorite child of capitalism and has co-opted the fashion industry for a long time now. So what we're seeing is a growing critical and long overdue discourse calling into question particularly the dominant global Western approach to fashion education um, in its co-opting the fashion industry. As Ben Berry stated so poignantly at last year's Digital Multilogue, he said, the house of fashion education is constructed on a foundation of whiteness, thinness, able-bodiedness and binaries. And simply welcoming in diversity and inclusion maintains this foundation that constructs the house. So to start this workshop, we want to take the temperature really among you as participants, what your concerns are in currently learning fashion. And with that, I'll pass I'll pass over um, to Martina. Hi, everyone. So yes, so just to kick off our first interactive activity of the day. So we have uh, a question that we want to ask. And that question is, what horrifies you about current fashion education? So you can scan the QR code on your phone, or I can type the link in the chat just now. And we want you to go to the Mentimeter and there are there's a prompt and it has about five words on there that you can uh, insert. And we just want to see, you know, what exactly are we kind of sharing? What nightmares are we sharing at this current moment in fashion education? Thank you. So I'm sure many of you will be familiar with with Mentimeter. You can go to the site, type in five words and then we'll see what what the concerns are, what are the share concerns, what are individual concerns. So I'm just going to swap over to the website to see what comes up. There was a little glimpse already of the work that came up. Uh, there's more already. You should be able to see we have unemployment in practicality limitation, lack of sustainability, toxicity. Unpreparedness. So sustainability comes up in, in different guises as it were. So there's sustainability, lack of sustainability. The lack of POC design tutors, mm -hmm. fake wokeness lack of time with tutors. Mm -hmm. Diversity, I think, is something, again, it comes up in different guises. That's great. Thank you all very much for contributing and, and really, yeah, showing us, giving us an impression um, in a way what shared concerns are um, with what we're doing. And I'm just going to switch back to the... Before we we really want to start our create creativity and start, start to destruct and reconstruct maybe ideas, we would love to give you 
a little input and um, try to frame a little more how did we get there, um, how, what, what are the developments um, maybe that, um, that we're having this, this shared concerns about fashion education. Because really what we can see that fashion education is is in, in crisis. It's not aligned. It's not fit for purpose and it needs rebuilding. So what we've done is look back and, and ask ourselves, OK, how did we get here? So we've identified these six major developments in the recent few decades in fashion education. We're going to very quickly outline them and then ask you back um, to think with us, to think together, you know, what to throw, what to keep and how to go about it. Yeah, first development is, uh, or we call it academization. So fashion education is originated in studio work. It used to be an education of makers. So traditionally the making, but also designing of clothing has been taught in the business really, mostly at craft and workshops. And um, since the 19th uh, century, it started to, to um, also been taught in, like you see in the picture, in vocational schools. And since then, um, fashion has started being taught at technical colleges and also universities. And there's there's a major development in the last uh, 100 years that it moved from the major, more vocational training to of craft and make, making to widely established tertiary education. And what's um, what's come with that is really the structural and conceptual academization was fathered by an intellectualization and a scientification of fashion. And it takes place, I don't know if any of you know the old site, Centre St Martins in the 90s is an important site. Um, fashion became widely recognized as a subject of study, you know, um, journals like fashion theory came about. And really, what this um, this intellectualization was also part of is another um, major development, which is specialization. So this is played out in the development of specialist courses, not just around fashion theory, fashion history, but mainly, and you all know this, specialist design courses, communication marketing courses, marketing, PR, business, buying, styling, photography, journalism, mirroring a growing specialization and marketization of the fashion industry itself. And really now fashion, so-called fashion professionals are being um, educated mainly for the industrialized, externalized and media marketing oriented fashion business. And what has happened here is a separation from design idea and realization to its making. So there's a problematic division of academic versus vocational, knowledge versus skill, creative labor versus productive labor, and so-called production is relegated to the executive non-creative. And it's also paid a lot less. The closer you get to production, the lesser you're valued, the lesser you're paid. The closer you get to the land, the lesser you're paid, the lesser you're valued. So hierarchization so, is an important yeah, point. This specialization, of course, in education or the separation of the disciplines really um, solidifies um, also the, the global hierarchization that we see. So fashion education in the global West, as Renato already said, is mainly produces mainly higher, higher chain professionals, uh, whereas fashion production is mainly located in the global South, uh, South East. So there's very strong vertical and horizontal hierarchies. Um, Current educational model has co-created this hierarchization, favoring designers, marketeers, and communicators over market makers, them being recognized as the fashion professionals, solidifying a local and global hierarchization. And these hierarchizations are, are of course, visible in, in uh, various fields of so working conditions. We're talking about salaries, working hours, and also in the validation of intellectual work versus manual work. Something which which we're all witnessing is a huge expansion. You know, the specialization I just mentioned goes hand in with it with a huge expansion of the field of fashion education, which has essentially become a business. So where we are joining you from, which is from um, Berlin at the moment, in Germany in 2000, you had 4000 enrolled students in this area of, of textile and fashion. Um, 2020 was 6,000 students. The problem is that only 92 companies in Germany 
um, larger than 50 employees to employ these. So essentially, these students are going into an empty market. In the US, um, the same has happened where student numbers have tripled. In the UK, where most of Europe are, are based, um, over the past two decades, fashion has become one of the most competitive courses at university with at least six applications for each place at the top schools. So here you can see that the UK had over 1,400 um, fashion design courses provided by over 200 providers. Um, you have 4,000 fashion design graduates uh, every year, um, eight or seven years ago. You have almost um, double that number now. So it's more schools, more courses, more students. But especially from the late 1980s, you see this vast externalization of the industry away from Western Europe and North America to the global south in terms of making. So there is a there is an industry that's really um, uh, you know not relevant for for the number of graduates that are coming out of this system. So there's a quantitative um, discrepancy, but there's also a qualitative discrepancy. As um, Frederica Calotto observed, teaching methods are often the same as they were 100 years ago. So huge expansion, but no development or little development. Yeah, and fashion education has developed really into an education business with that resonating cavity in the labour market. Um, the larger creative industry developments created breeding ground for privatizations and boosted the market where education is based, dependent and interlinked to economic efficiencies. Um, private institutions or educational powerhouses, I think it's also because we're looking from Germany um, and the, the private educational market is a different one from the, the one in the UK, I suppose. Um, it is important to know that fashion education, of course, ha has a long and rich tradition in all parts of the world and that we are just critiquing the Euro-American model because currently we see an expansion of this model taking as an e economic opportunity in um, various um, regions of the world. So. While it is clear that education costs money and design education even more so, there is an urgent question of ethics with unequal opportunities and access. We're witnessing an acceleration, intensifica intensification and a dangerous sh shift in the values. Um, and this is also fueled by the processes of digitalization. Um, and digitalization, I mean, really, it's been an important drive and determinant in the fashion industry and fashion education in the last years anyway. COVID has strongly amplified and accelerated um, the developments. There are these big hopes and promises to do better, more accessible, to be more sustainable. At the same time, the process of dematerialization, dehumanization, change the pace and cycles of making, of learning, of teaching. And there's again a set of ethical questions occurring when it comes to constructing a digital value chain. So um, just as one example, you know, you have digital fashion being made in the global West and shown by big fashion houses. They're being programmed by, for example, Indian programmers in huge holes that get paid a pittance. So you have the same model the same economic capitalist model, exploitative model, um, repeated. Yeah, I, um, these developments that we just described, so academization, specialization, hierarchization, expansion, commercialization, digitalization of the fashion education in, in recent months, years and decades, has resulted in what we see as a lack of alignment between current fashion education, the professional field of fashion and the world we live in. Um, the values of fashion education don't align with the values needed to create a more equal and sustainable world. And as a result, we find ourselves within a fashion education system characterized by discriminations. So these developments have produced highly exclusive, expensive, inaccessible, irrelevant fashion educational system. Educational opportunities, um, discrimination based on race, 
national origin, sex, religion, disability, language skills, economic conditions remain rife and concern access, study and career chances. You could say getting in, being at and moving on fashion education is really um, divisive. There are different discriminations at different stages of the education that need to be taken into account. Um, the figures are still hard to get. Um, you get some figures about access uh, to university. Um, those of you who watched um, Ricardo Barker's film yesterday, I think uh, very powerful voices there from Disclosure Voicing Our Truth that talked about being denied the chance to, to do even get in, but also when you're in to really participate. Um, and be seen. I think an important source of data is the FACE report, See My Face, that some of you um, have probably already read. If you haven't read, it's highly recommendable. And it's um, it's really showing us the differences um, in perception and, and access um, for what they've taught minoritized um, students. Um, the, the need for transformation is really rife um, and there are many important voices. Tanvir at, um, at Centre St. Martin asking questions like our fashion sketchbook races, for example. Um, the FACE Summit is, is a you know, hugely important and timely event um, to address, but also to bring people together and collectively work. But how do we transform? fashion education, how do we transform the sector? Um, there are different ways of transforming a problem. Um, one is to stop something, to stop doing bad. The other is to amplify the good. And the third is to develop new behavior. And this is what we would like to do with you now for um, this next really interactive half an hour, um, a kind of creative, collaborative, constructive destruction. Yes. So let's start with our first collective brainstorming round. And um, our first, we first want to use our creativity to really turn turn the question somehow around and um, ask, or I would like to invite you and um, ask the question. So what can you do to create the most horrific fashion learning experience. So it's really about thinking what um, actions, what learning settings, what experiences um, make fashion fashion learning um, the most exclusive, the most discriminatory, most devaluing experiences you ever could think of. So make yourself a list really. If you have a pen and paper, please grab it, make a list for yourself or try to collect um, ideas in your in, just for yourself in, in, in the brain for now. Think, make a list of what can you do to create the most horrific fashion learning experience. So make a little list, go wild, go crazy. Use your creativity to really think about the, the, the the biggest nightmares that you could imagine that could happen in a in a fashion learning in a, in a space where we learn about fashion together. If you have that list, then of course we would be curious to hear what your ideas are about. Please put it in the chat. So what do you think of what what are the most horrific fashion learning experiences? A crit day every day. Very nice. Good idea. So let's go. What are there other ideas? So what are horrific fashion learning experiences? Not sleeping and eating properly. Yes. Having two tutors falsely lead you on with encouraging that you pursue a particular discipline within fashion because course not a way to harness creativity but just the business yeah no diversity in the student and teaching body yes bad teaching with a lot of ignorance yes of course let us know about your ideas teach only global western fashion history 
the assumption that a person doesn't speak English because of how they look like and pretending to not understand what they are saying regardless of how well spoken they are. Of course, there's language coming in. Discriminations by language. And thanks a lot for sharing. And so now, um, if you have your list in mind or on a paper, Think about for a little moment, um, if there's, there's part, be really, really honest to yourself. Is there part of this list where, where you engage in? Is there things you also sometimes, is there items that you sometimes do or we all do sometimes? So try to be honest with yourself. What are just a little tiny bit are engaged in and a part of this. Circle these items. What do you think? Is there anything you think, ah, oh, there's a part I have in, there's a little kind of responsibility on with circle these items. And if you if you have circled them, then now underline items that you really would love to stop. So what actions or behavior do you really want to stop? <laughs> Underline these. If you've just joined us, um, we're, we're engaging in collective um, creative destruction of the current uh, fashion education model and thinking about what can you do to create the most terrific fashion learning experience? Thinking also, what are our parts that we play? What do we contribute? And what is it that we're wanting to stop? And we're now just very briefly going to send you into breakout room with another person in the workshop to have a very brief exchange about what it is that you're wanting to stop? What have you come up with? And what is the point where you say, oh, this is something actually I, I do sometimes do. And as Francisca said, sometimes we all, you know, we all do certain, we all engage in certain behavior where we know this isn't really contributing to, to the best possible um, learning experience here or the, you know, the most open or equal experience for everyone. So we're going to, you be sent into a breakout now, um, for about five minutes and then call back. So have an exchange with the partner in your breakout about what it is that you're wanting to stop. Sarah will kindly send you into a breakout. Great to be doing that now. Yes, please. Yes. It's sort of doing it. Great, fantastic. <laughs> And I think you might need to accept being sent into breakout. It'll just be and there was someone I couldn't wouldn't let me assign. I'm just trying to check. Um, That's OK. Tilda's in a room on her own. Maybe you can switch her to another room where already people there. Yeah, so she can be with two people. Two people. Thank you very much, Sarah. Yeah, sign. Some people would not let me. Wait, she's yeah. switching her. That's right, okay. hang on. And put in sign Joe. Three. Once again, Scott, I glaube, die, den letzten Teil, des, den dritten Teil, was yeah, kannst du so kurz. Machen mm -hmm. wir nicht als Breakout, sondern machen wir Not nur als, mm -hmm. als kurz und dann nur in yeah. Chat. Ne? Und kannst du die nächste Frage dann auch wieder in Chat posten? Ja. Yeah. Weil ich okay. kann nicht alles machen. Ja. Yeah. Okay. Martina, are you at um, AUP right now? Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> Great. It's been your crazy day, isn't it? For how many minutes we should um, 
Let well, we said we said, said five, five minutes. Five minutes. Did you, Sarah? Did you pre-program or do you um, manually I get didn't people back? I I manually I'll manually call them back. So tell okay. me, can you just give me? So how was yeah. that? Sort of three more minutes. Yeah, I think two and a yeah. half, kind of. Two yeah. and a half. Yeah. And Green and uh, Joelle, who are who've joined us more recently, if you're wondering where everybody is there in the breakout rooms, having an exchange over, um, uh, we asked them to think about what can you do to create the most horrific fashion learning experience, and what is it that you are sometimes involved in doing yourself, and what is it that you're wanting to stop about that kind of behaviour? So really thinking about how to transform fashion education. But everybody's going to be back in about a minute and a half, so yeah. you can just um, hang on, and we'll hang continue on. in a moment. Bernata, what was the the next round? How many? The next round is it's three people. Three Fine. people, yeah. Yeah. And we are just going to do one more breakout and not two more breakouts. So, ju so just one, three people just one breakout. More. Yeah. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we do the chat chat round, reflecting on the on the exchanges in the in the breakout? Just no, I think we'll it. go. Yeah, we I just we'll drop it. it and we go further, yeah. right? Yeah. Sarah, when you ask think, people back, is it immediately or do they get a few seconds to? Finish up. What's the setting? I gave them a one minute notice call like 30 okay. seconds ago. So I was just asking, okay, I'll fantastic. Just call okay, them back, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I just give it one more few more. Um Okay, so participants are supposed to come back very soon, right? All right, I'll call them back now. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, the rooms are just closing. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Stop. There you are. Welcome back. Welcome back. So hopefully you enjoyed the exchanges about um, what you really want to stop. So what? kind of um, horrific fashion learning experiences you, you never want to experience again. So um, let's go on with our creative distraction. So now we're moving to reconstruction already. So the different ways of changing um, a situation is really thinking about what do you want to stop in terms of your behavior, but also what do you want to amplify in terms of good practice and good behavior. So we ask you now to to think about um, the most positive, empowering, transformational fashion learning experience that you've had. And that can be, you know, something that you were part of, something that you um, facilitated, something that you witnessed, something that you heard about or read about. 
And we would love for you to share a story of the most positive, empowering, transformational fashion learning experience that you've encountered. So have a moment to think about that. And we will now send you again into a breakout, different constellation. There's going to be three people in every room. You might want to, you know, open your cameras for these little chats to make it a little more personal, to create a bit more of a personal space. And we ask you to each share a story. So for about a minute, you know, share your story, ask each other and Again, we'll have these short breakout rooms for about six minutes, have an exchange about these most positive, empowering, transformational fashion learning experiences, and then we ask you back. So, and Sarah, if you could to... kindly um, move people into the breakout rooms now. And try to really to listen to each other. Um, don't Do not interrupt um, the stories accept if you want to amplify and say oh great this is a, this is a very good experience this is what what is really valuable to ampli to amplify so um don't ask people about how what where but just try to be very positive in your reaction in your stories so if you could kindly move people across that would be them. fantastic yeah. thank you very much thank you So Sarah, were you which session were you in before? What was the last session you were doing? So I did the the panel one, uh, which was um, with oh I was there. It was really Rada. good. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. Yeah, really strong. Rada. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. You know really? what I loved about so which one was it? It oh. was about racism in the fashion industry. Ah. Really good. Sorry, Martina, you wanted to one. say something? Yeah. You know, I was just going to say that the Mentimeter for the Dreams one is the same as the Nightmares. Is that okay? Or Yeah, it's the same link. It's just okay. page two, basically. So what I will do, which I can do. Hold on. I quickly stop sharing. Very good point. Thank you. Um, so what I will do is already move to... Second one, yeah. So it's the same link, but it's just the second, um, the second page, basically. When people come back now, we would have a little um, reflection round, right? In chat. Martina, did were you able to attend anything from FACE? No, unfortunately, I haven't. I was just in class all day and yesterday, so I just yeah. missed the whole thing. Yeah, it was really, really good. I enjoyed um, yesterday. Christina's talk, I thought, was great. And then um, also this morning, there were a couple of really interesting, really interesting talks. Mm. Sarah, were you able to go to any or are you more sort of in the on the tech side for this? <laughs> yeah, I am more on the tech side, but <laughs> I did manage to get to listen to some. Like, I think um, I was on the <laughs> I was listening to my phone on the way home with my kids, like I had to take them to their <laughs> yeah. swimming lesson. And so I was like <laughs> making sure it worked and I was like listening in. It was great. Yeah, it was really yeah. fun yesterday. Yeah. Oh. 
good. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was in the in the digital um, talking about um, like discriminations and 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 digitization and ignoring Kamisani. So oh he, yeah, he was also in talking about digital sustainability, but there mm. was also someone else, Sonia Sud, I think she's talking mm. about data, data, like how racism solidifies also um, uh, how data analysis um, um, solidifies also racism. It's very interesting. So not knowing about the the, so, the right sources and numbers of data is really interesting. Hi, Patrick, you've just joined us. Um, the other participants are just in breakout rooms uh, talking about positive experiences um, and empowering transformational fashion learning experiences. So they should be back in about um, one minute. So just bear with us. Um, Sarah, if you could give them a note and then pull them back in one pull minute, that would be fantastic. One minute announcement. Yeah, I've just said. Yeah. Thank you so much. Martina, do you have more classes after this or can you join the programme again? I have a midterm at 4.55. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realise it was midterm. Oh, yeah. Which, you, which, you, which you is an so exam, good. really? Matthias? Yeah. Oh my god. It's a paper, yeah. yeah so it's you have to write week. a paper, some, you have to write something? or uh, No, so this one is for my marketing class, so it's um, multiple choice, I think 50 or 60 multiple choice questions. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a tough one today. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Carters. The others are just coming back from breakout rooms where they shared stories of their most positive, empowering, transformational fashion learning experiences. Should I bring them back now? Yes, please. Yes. Just called them back. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Welcome back. Back. So welcome back. We hope that you had a constructive and um, enriching exchange in your little groups and we would love to hear back from you. So think about, you know, in your groups, hearing these different um, stories of the most positive, empowering, transformational fashion and learning experiences. Did you see any patterns emerging or any similarities um, that came up in the groups? So maybe you can use the chat to share some of these patterns or similarities or indeed some of these most positive, empowering, transformational experiences themselves. Or maybe some of you, rather than writing, would also just like to open up the mic and share one of the stories that you've had, one of the moments. So we'd love to hear yeah. your experience, positive, empowering, transformational fashion learning moments, fashion learning experiences. Hi. Hi. So 
Um, I guess I would like to share, like, when I was in my internship, I guess, it was quite an empowering fashion moment for me because um, my boss actually took time into uh, harnessing thinking skills um, other than just the making. He would make us read books and report back to him after we actually read through them and I believe that was the beginning of like a positive change because it made me think you know that all these rumors are not that bad when you appear in the right place since there's a lot of rumors about fashion being quite tough on people and uh, I guess the mentorship really strengthened my character as a person and it made it allowed me to have a safe space to become a, a better version of myself I guess so that's about it I think <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's great. Anyone else would like to share a, a positive learning experience? So we hope that even though um, you're not using the chat, it still means that you've had positive learning experience and we would like to together think about dreams and I pass on to Martina. Yes, so once again, I will paste the link in the chat for a little more thinking about what is the most positive and empowering impact fashion education can have. So, and five words or less, uh, try to gather your thoughts and think about what has been the most empowering uh, impact that fashion education has had and probably will have in the future because we always want to look toward the future. So yeah, let's let's think about this collective idea together. I'll just switch over to the other site again and see what what dreams are emerging. Are their dreams emerging? What do you think is fashion education capable of? Uh, these first first dreams like free thinking the hands on of fashion education innovation inclusivity empowerment of pop guidance creativity And as soon as words appear larger, so innovation and free thinking is obviously something that, um, you know, a, a number of you believe um, can be fostered through fashion education, can be developed. And even though, for example, we've seen that diversity was something that you were also, you know, lack of diversity was something that you were horrified with currently in fashion education, it also has the capacity to, to foster that to open up to that, it can include all of us. Thank you very much for, Thank you for very your much. input here. And really now we're, um, we're obviously, you know, wrapping up this, this um, short workshop and, and thinking about um, what what can we do you know what what can we do what, what can be concrete next steps that we can take so just have a quick think you know just for yourself 
What is it that you could do today to change? What is it that you could do, you know, tomorrow or in the next year, seeing that we're at the beginning of a new academic year, or really what might be a long-term plan for you to change in terms of creating more positive and transformational, empowering fashion learning experiences for yourself, for your fellow students, um, but also, you know, in terms of your institution, what can you um, also encourage your your tutors to do if you're a student or your colleagues to do if you're a professor? So we hope you you th can think about that and come away with a um, with a sense that you know it's it's worth reflecting on on the the bad behavior and trying to stop that. It's worth thinking about the you know the the good practice, the encouraging practices, and amplify those. But also to think about okay, what can I do? What can we do today, tomorrow? And, um, and in the future. So we really want to thank you very much for participating in this short um, workshop, for drawing up these concrete steps to build a more inclusive, just and beneficial, beneficial fashion education system. The urgent question remains always, you know, how can we turn our actions, how can we turn our reflections into actions? How can we turn words into deeds? And I think Greta Thunberg has reminded us so astutely um, and to extend her predicament, we cannot buy or invest ourselves out of this crisis. We can't talk or reflect ourselves out of this crisis, but we can educate and act together. Um, and even if the circumstances seem otherwise and restricted, and even if the possible steps appear small and slow, the thinker Hannah Arendt um, reminds us that the smallest act in the most limited circumstances bears the seed of boundlessness because one deed and sometimes one word suffices to change every constellation. And with that, we would like um, to just return back to Bell Hook. So we start with, because the quote that we read that the class remains the most radical space of possibility in the academy continues because Bell Hooks urges us all to open our minds and hearts so that we can know beyond the boundaries of what is acceptable, so that we can think and rethink, so that we can create new visions. So see that as an invitation. And from all of us, thank you very much for taking part and contributing and for dreaming together. Yeah, thank you very much, all of you. And I think it's really about relying on all voices and bringing all voices together in a very non hierarchical way, also talking from the perspective as fashion educator. But it's really important that we listen to you as students and that we include all voices that can be heard, be part of. So thank, thank you, you very, much. very much. Thank you to Martina, Francisca. Thank you, Sarah, for enabling this and really to the FACE conference for inviting us. Enjoy the rest of this really hugely important summit um, and all the best to you. Bye.